الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها المحبة الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم says واعتسموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى in his book the Quran he says hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide and do not divide Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is ordering us وَالْأَمْرِ يُفِيدُ الْوُجُوبِ that a command, a statement in the imperative form means that that is an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you to be one, to be united. And He's commanding you subhanahu wa ta'ala to be united on something. And what is that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to unite upon? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to adhere to his rope. Hablillah. Jami'an. Wala tafarraku. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to adhere to his rope. And the Hablillah is the Quran. And as some of the Mufassireen say, that it is the Sunnah, or that it is the Quran and the Sunnah, or it is the Jama'ah. And all of those meanings complement one another. That the Hablillah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general is the Quran, the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we know how to practice the Quran from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Jama'ah, Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Because we are ordered again by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَطِيُ اللَّهَ وَعَطِيُ Rasul." Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, after explaining that we would divide and being asked about the destruction of those who divided and the other and the earlier nations, He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kullahum finnar. Kullaha finnar. All of them are in the fire except one. And the companions because they were Haris al Al-Ilm, they wanted to know the Haq. They said, Man here, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Those who are upon what I'm upon. 
my companions are upon. So what does that mean for us? That means we are ordered to distinguish and follow those who are upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or at least to be with them and at Tasimu Bihablillah with them to adhere to the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with them and not divide from them and that's Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that we are ordered to adhere to the same path in Minhaj that means we cannot unite upon just saying we're Muslim, but this one makes tawaf around the graves. And this one says we must rectify ourselves through politics by any means. Voting, elections, uh, denigrating the Sharia, just going with the popular vote. If it goes against Islam, if we, if we agree that, uh, 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 that we shouldn't wear hijab, then we go with that. If we agree that the women should go out with makeup, then we go with that. If we agree that the brothers should do such and such and such and such, we go with that. No. That goes against the madhab of Ahl Sunnah. And it goes against what we were ordered to do. We were ordered to be one. United, but we have to be united upon what? Hablillah. And Hablillah is what? Ahlus is, is the, the Quran. Kitabillah. Wa sallatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa madhab salaf as salih. That's in general. That that is what we're ordered to unite upon. So the question arises who? Who should we follow? Now, if we look at that concept as one of our Beautiful brothers asked the question, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in him and guide us in him and protect us in him from the hellfire. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. He asked a very beautiful question. He says, I live in the UK and I don't know if I should go to I'm confused. He says, I'm confused. And he said, a lot of people are confused. And from the questions that I see, and from what I hear from some of my brothers and sisters in Europe, that people are confused because they see people who claim the same minhaj and methodology destroying one another and differing over certain issues and having al-wala wal bara based on those issues, calling each other hisbis, calling each other this, calling each other that. So it's confusing for the youth and it's confusing for some of the elders and it's confusing for the people in general. What do we do about all this confusion? Should I go with S Pubs? Should I be with Medina.com? Should I be with uh, Green Lane? Should I be with the Meshit in Cardiff? Should I be with uh, Croydon? Should I be with, you know, uh, Slough? Whatever. But the same fitna is everywhere. And the rectification is the same. Going back to that Hablila. Now me personally, I don't know as far as the UK. I've never been out of Heathrow Airport. So I can't speak on those affairs. But I do know many Tulab al -Ilm there. Many that I know from Medina. And many that I know from Yemen. That we were in Damaj together and I saw them in Sana'a and I saw them all over the place. And I know many brothers from the Jamia. We were in Medina together in the same Durus with the Mashaykh. And I can say you have enough people there to ask and suffice you for clarity. Number one. Number two, get rid of the confusion. Why do I say that? Because your life is more complex than that, about knowing who's on and who's off. But if you see that someone is calling to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on a madhab salaf al-Saleh, even if he makes a mistake here and he makes a mistake there, because every one of those individuals and groups make mistakes because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who sin or make mistakes are those who repent. They are those who repent. May Allah bless us to be of the Tawabin. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. So first, get rid of your confusion. And that's easy to say, I know.
But if you listen to this, because what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Atiyullah wa atiyu rasul. You follow, you obey Allah and you obey a rasul. You don't obey, obey Maktaba Salafiyyah. You don't obey Medina.com. You don't obey Masjid Tawheed. You don't obey this masjid or that masjid or these guys or those guys. That's not what you're ordered to do. We're not even ordered to follow our great imams uh, blindly from the four a'imma. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed. La, that's not what we're ordered to do. We're not ordered to follow them in every issue. So what about Bin Bas? What about uh, 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 Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, Imam Wadi, uh, 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 and uh, all these other a'imma of today? No, we're not ordered to blindly follow them. That, and none of those a'imma taught that. That's the amazing thing. But yet we want to follow someone. We want to feel comfortable. Now, of course, we want to benefit from those imams and from the people of Elm and from those du'at. But you have to take your scale and apply that wherever you are. If you're in America and you're in Philadelphia, if you're here in Seattle, Washington, if you're in Cardiff in the UK, if you're in Sweden, Stockholm in Sweden, if you're in the Netherlands, wherever you are, if you're in China and Beijing, you have to stick with Ahlul Sunnah. And you have to take that scale. Is this person following, are they calling me to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf? Okay, then I will benefit from their El. And when I hear a mistake from them that I know is a mistake, I won't follow them in that. Best. So we're not ordered to follow them. That's first and foremost. Secondly, when you hear about rumors, for example, the brother mentioned that there were some rumors he heard about Mecca Salafia. Maybe you will hear lots of, of course you're going to hear lots of gossip about Green Lane and about Mektaba Salafiyah and about this one and about that one. But rumors in the Ba'd al-Dhan, some of the, the suspicion is sin. So don't waste your time about the rumors. Sometimes it's better for you to find out for yourself. Or at least if you feel there's doubtfulness and there possibly is a threat to your deen, then don't go. That's it. But don't waste your valuable time in this dunya uh, indulging in these affairs and wasting your time because death is upon us. And we have many greater things we need to get ourselves right. We need to make Toba and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to serve our elders that are still living. We need to be good to our wives and our children and give them tarbiyah and get them out of the streets. We have so much to do that I don't have time to know where so-and-so studied, how many years did he study, is he on the sunnah, is he not on the sunnah, he made a mistake here, did he make toba here, oh, sheikh, so-and-so spoke about this sheikh, no, I don't have time for that, I don't even waste my time, and that's a ni'mah and a benefit of getting a little bit older on this path, is you begin to see that some of that stuff was just a waste of your valuable time, and people, as Sheikh Suleiman Rahayli mentioned, when sometimes people call you to not benefit from someone or not benefit from uh, 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 a conference or such and such, which is known scholars from Ahlul Sunnah are there, those people who tell you not to go to the conferences of Ahlul Sunnah, they are like the Qitba al turuq They are like the, the ones who cut the path of goodness because here you have a path of goodness. You have ulama coming to you. In the UK, I, daily I get advertisements and, and things from my brothers in the UK who send me stuff. Mashaykh are coming all the time. You guys have such a ni'mah there. In such a small little island. You have such a ni'mah. So many mashaykh. But yet, the brothers over here warn against these Salafi mashaykh and that and cause doubt about Salaf, well-known Salafi mashaykh. And likewise, it goes back and forth. And then the person who's confused on the ground, they don't benefit. They miss ulama that come to see them and they don't even go. They're paid. They are, it, it, the carpet's out for you to benefit. And then you listen to those people who cut off the good. And so they've caused harm to the dawah and you lose because you let, let confusion override you.
or you believe one sheikh at the conference is not Salafi so you don't go. No, don't cut yourself off from that good. Go benefit from those ulama of Ahl Sunnah when they come to you. And the last thing I want to mention, Ahabatifillah, is the importance of conserving your time and benefiting from your time. That use those things, and there's so much information out there now on the internet, which is good, that's translated from the ulama that deal with these same issues and questions, go to those things and, and listen to what they say about these principles of Hezbiyah and about warning about people and about wasting your time and about indulging in affairs that don't concern you. See what the ulama say and you'll see that what they are saying is calling you to good and that you don't need to get, uh, get confused that if you practice those basic things and don't care what someone they saw you go in this message they saw who cares what they say you keep going forward you keep striving to come closer to Allah and Allah will make clear if they're a Hizbi organization a Hizbi group Allah will make it clear and expose them for you and may Allah expose the people who call to deviance and call us away from good wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam